nine picks. We have three picks in the first 75. We have the flexibility to move up. We can move back. We feel we're in prime position to upgrade our football team. You gotta dig deep into each player, whether it's his mental, whether it's his character, you know, psychological testing, the analytics. A lot of things go involved when trying to project a player and there's no exact way of doing that. If we feel a player could help us, could upgrade us, and we feel he's worth going to get, we're gonna go get. He's got good mechanics in the pocket, although he can be a little more consistent. He's shown good accuracy on the run. He's a good athlete. This maturity and accountability is always an issue. Struggles with life skills, little bothers him. He just constantly likes to be difficult. I like this guy. I think he's a starter, and I think he's certainly an upgrade. I don't get a lot of hard no's when I talk to those guys there. Like, they'll tell you about guys' issues and stuff, and this is one of the very few guys from there that they've been like, no way. We've been here now for almost two weeks going through these meetings, and the meetings have been great. Been doing deep dives on each player and doing studies, and it's been very collaborative. It's been fun. When we get to this part of the process, we have a huge body of work, almost an entire book on each player. We know the player so well, so it's our chance just to kind of present the person and the player and kind of how we feel about him, both on the team and his draft value. A little bit inconsistent as a tackler, but I think he's, he's tough and he's willing. I just like this guy. I like the athletic ability. I like the makeup. I like the ball skills. One of the more important parts of the evaluation process is each player's measurables, being height, weight, speed, hand, arm, length, all those things. Each position has a threshold, you know, kind of a cutoff line. If it's if his speed's below this, he's probably not going to make it, or we definitely have to downgrade him. You know, or if his size or length is below this, we're going to have to downgrade him. But with that being said, you don't want to weight it too much. And there's, some of these kids have three years good body of work on film, and they're good football players. How much do we want to ding them because they're a tenth of a second slower than another guy, and that may be subjective, but it's always gonna take a role and play a part in it and have its weight. How much weight that is, I think it depends by player position. He's big, he's smart, he's versatile. I love the motor. I think he's a really good athlete. He's, you know, in terms of you know athleticism, I still think he's the best athlete in our room right now. So I don't think, I, I know we're all in love with the guy, but there, I do think he has some limitations. It's an opinion-oriented business here, and that's how we're all gonna get better. My goal every time is to go in there with an open mind to hear the other opinions, but then also be confident and convicted in my opinions on the players and be willing to share my thoughts and how we're gonna to get to the best decision as a group. The more eyes and the more thought and the more conversation we're having should lead us to the best decisions. Majority of good football players the character usually align, and those are the guys that succeed. You could have a talented player. If he's a bad character person, he's not gonna last long in this league. You know, you can't give a guy millions of dollars when he leaves the building, he has a different life. It was one of the best interviews we've had. This is a mature kid, but with a sense of humor. He has no off the field issues. Business approach, community service type kid. Football character is excellent. He's the captain, he's the leader of the whole team. Guys respect him, whether you're playing offense or defense. He's a program changer, locker room changer. You gotta love football. When you have the love for football, there are things, selfish things that you're gonna sacrifice to be the best player that you can. You gotta be tough. And most important, you gotta be smart. You gotta be smart. All the other things, coaches could teach you how to tackle. They could teach you how to run routes but they can't teach you to love the game. They can't teach you toughness. His football character, if you're gonna uh, talk about commitment and preparation, it's off the charts. This kid here is, he's a pro already and eager to learn. He's the alpha and the captain there and, that, and that's what he could be in the room here um, as he develops. If he's in your room, this, this guy could end up being one of your captains. If I go to Alabama and I'm evaluating, you know, Joe Williams, I got to speak to at least six to seven people in regards to his character. You got to have sources at the school. You know, that source could be the strength coach, it could be his position coach, it could be the head coach, it could be the trainer, it could be the academic counselor, it could be the, the person that cleans the building. It could, you could even go as far as his high school. He's a really nice kid, he's very unassuming, uh, maybe a little bit happy-go-lucky, but it's nothing bad. He doesn't really understand why everybody thinks he's such a big deal when he walks around campus. 
very even keel demeanor. Nothing's ever too high, nothing's ever too low for this guy. Just very, very consistent. This isn't a bad kid or a kid that's gonna, gonna get in trouble like that off the field, but this is a kid that would be so high maintenance for everyone in the building. I think it would be, you know, sources I trust there, they're like, no way. Whenever a source gives you inf information, you take it for what it is, you trust it. You trust it, but the more people you talk to, the story is either gonna align or not align. And when it's not aligned, you gotta continue to dig, you gotta continue to, to, to research this player. Then, as a scout, you pay to come up with your own decision on conclusion on this player. And the only issue is they worry about this kid when he goes home in terms of eating. He comes back 10 to 15 pounds overweight because of his mother's cooking. You're trying to paint this picture for the GM to make and the coach and the head coach to make the best decision and what's going to help you win Super Bowls. We're collecting data. We have been collecting data on basically every draft, draft prospect we can for years and years and years. And then we take that data and feed it into a predictive model. Um, usually it's like a supervised machine learning model. And what that does is it translates all of these things we know pre-draft. So whether it's your measurables, height, weight, speed from pro days in the combine, or their college stats, uh, personal player information, like all these different things. We pick, take all that and then we use the model to sort out all that information, find the most important predictors, and then make a prediction on every prospect in the draft. A 26% chance of being an A uh, player, and that's for a, like based on their play time. Uh, the model's like concern, he's older and wingspan. Our goal is to provide a different perspective. Uh, we have data on thousands of draft prospects going back previous years, and we use that to kind of provide a different view of um, these guys that are coming out this year. I think there's definitely a stereotype that goes with that of, you know, scouts versus numbers or those types of things. But I think that's a little uh, distorted, a little off. Really, it's a collaborative effort. You know, we're all working together trying to accomplish the same goal. Scott's in all our meetings, you know, and, and uh, every player that he has a grade on every player as we do. So if our grade's different, I want to know why. And so he's in every meeting. We start at 7.30, we end at 9. So we value analytics uh, here at, at big time and value Scott and his crew. George is very collaborative, uh, really open. It's been great working with him so far. Um, just getting everyone involved and getting their opinion and then talking through why we may agree or disagree. What would be the vision if we, if we draft this guy the first year? Year one as a rookie, top 10 pick. How do we get him on the field? You have to have a vision. We ask the coaches, what's your vision for this player? If the player is really talented and doesn't fit the coach's vision, and then it's not going to work. So it's really important that you have communication with the Vic, all the coaches, all the scouts, and, and that's what we're going through now. I think this guy's, like I said in the first line, he's a backup, or if he's starting for you, you're always going to be looking to replace. So you do want to have a vision to where the player will have some immediate impact on your team and that's part of the process. So you do want to draft the best player available, but need does fit in there also a little bit more than it used to in the old days. I'd uh, love to have him. I think he's, uh, he's obviously you know, quickly an initial backup that will become a starter. If we needed this guy to start day one, he could. Uh, the higher you pick, the need factor is less um, prevalent, but still talked about. But uh, picking at nine, you should be able to get a really good player and one that should be able to play immediately for you in some shape or form. He comes in, he starts, he upgrades us. Solid. This guy's really good. He would help us. I think we've done a lot of work. We've, we've dissected every player. We've been detailed in our preparation. We've had multiple looks at uh, each and every player. You know, hope to add seven or eight, nine good players in this draft. been happy with our draft preparation. Been a lot of good energy in the building. People get to the work early, staying late. You know, it's been a collaborative effort with Vic, John, the college scouts, the pro scouts, uh, the coaches, and really everyone in the building. You take uh, something from everyone you've been around, and uh, they all have certain strengths, and just the uh, collaboration, just the human being 
uh, the detail. You, you take a little bit of everyone and you try to, to use it. It's been an all hands on deck approach, so I've been impressed with the whole building and the work they put in and, and we're excited for the draft.